Hey, Moody. Moody. Me and Brooke are going to try to do this ourselves. You think we can handle it? I hope so. What is going on, y'all? Jason over here at Cog Hill Farm. And uh, me and Brooke are going to try to attempt to do this ourselves for the barn to try to speed things up. Uh, if we can if we can pull this off, it'll be huge. I promise y'all. It'll be huge for us. It'll be huge for the electrical crew if we can pull this off. But uh let's go check on the animals and then let's head to the barn and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Good morning, Sheriff. How you so it's gonna be like that this morning? Hmm, gonna be like that? Is that what it's gonna be like this morning? Yeah, okay. I mean, it's touching somewhere. So I just realized I got a slight little electrical issue. It was a little shocking to me. <laughs> so as you know, we keep this hot wire across the top of Moody's pasture because if not, he'll just step over the fence. Honestly, he will. He did that a year or two ago, he just steps over the fence and was getting out. So that's why we had the hot wire up there because we don't need him getting out and hurting himself or destroying something and it's just better if he stays in his pasture well i was over there just talking to sheriff nugget and petting sheriff, sheriff nugget over there and as my hand was in there i got a jolt on the regular fencing and something's not right because that fencing here is not electrified or it's not supposed to be well that can only mean one thing that our electric fencing is touching somewhere on this metal fencing and let's go see if we can find it and get it fixed y'all come on with me right, let's look right here nothing here now we did give some hay the other day and i wonder if that's what's happening is it's touching over here where we got the hay you know, we, when we do the hay, we block this area off so we ain't got to wrestle with Moody and the goats getting out and all that kind of good stuff. And I think I see it. I think I see it. There it is, right there. That is our issue right there, y'all. Oh, it's right here, too. See it touching right there? All right, let's fix this real quick. We don't need that. So I'm thinking I got an extra one of these poles over here. I'm thinking that'll, that'll solve our problem. All right, here we go. Yeah, what's happening is it's just sagging right there and touching the wire. And y'all have seen us do it. We take this piece here and we just pull it across there to over there and that keeps them from coming in here while we put their hay out here. Otherwise, putting this hay out here with this thing and those three other things over there. Or I should say goofballs, because they're more like goofballs. Love them to death. Let's, uh, let's see if this works. All right, let's see here. We're gonna put this right here. Get all this off. I think it's gonna work, Moody. I do. All right, let's see here. Let's push that down. Oh. Now, that keeps it off the fence. And, there, we're good. We're good, now I can cut it back on, yeah. Y'all go eat some hay. All right, so let's see if this fixes it. All right, guys, let's see if this fixes it right here. All right, Nugget, let's try it again. Yep, we got it. We got it fixed. Yay! Got that electrical problem fixed, but guess what? We got another electrical problem. Well, I say problem. The barn needs wiring. And I think me and Brooke are gonna tackle it. So wish us luck, okay? I know you're the water inspector and the sheriff, but, um, we might need you to inspect the electrical when we're done. But I'll let you know.
before we start tackling anything in the barn, I want to show you guys something out in the garden that is happy days here on the farm. Besides my cosmos feel looking absolutely stunning. All right, y'all. Got some big news out here in the garden. Uh, number one, me and Brooke did finish trellising the tomatoes. So we're done trellising tomatoes and finally got that done. Thank goodness. Number two, our tomatoes are turning. So we're harvesting tomatoes. So let's harvest some right now. And I want to do them in separate baskets because I want to know which ones taste the best. That's, that's what I want to know. If I find one that that I used to like, that I find one that I like better because there's constantly new ones coming out and I got a new one here that I've never grown before. And I'll go show you guys that one. Uh, then I may phase one out because of flavor because it's all about flavor for me. Plus disease resistance and high, uh, productivity. And that's why I love these new hybrids that Hoss sells so well. The Bellarosa, the Red Snapper are also been two of my favorites for a few years now, especially the Bellarosa. But they're always coming out with new ones. And like the Hossinator, we're growing the Hossinator this year, which is Hoss's tomato. And I, was, uh, I was tried a new one this year called Southern Ripe Tomato. Now I do have two heirlooms that I'm growing and I'm gonna show you guys those and I'll show you why I don't grow that many heirloom tomatoes anymore versus these new hybrids. These new hybrids now, for the most part, they, um, they've got great flavor. Uh, you know, it's not quite as good as those heirlooms are, but they're really, really getting close. They're really getting there, y'all. And they got the disease resistance we're looking for. They got the, uh, the uh, productivity that we're looking for. And a lot of them really, really do well versus pest. So I'll show you what I'm talking about real quick. And let's harvest the tomatoes and let's keep them separated because I want to do a, t I even would like to do a blind taste test with the varieties that I'm growing this year. I really would. Yeah, you can see, I just wanna show you these. these. This is the Red Snapper. And having a really great Red Snapper year, this is more like a beef steak style tomato. It's a really big tomato. And, but you can look, all green, no issues. Let's gotta get us a sun gold here. They look fabulous. So does the Halsinator right there. Look how beautiful it looks as well as the Bellarosa right behind it. All of them looking great. Now, mind you that these tomatoes just got trellis. So all that rain we've had, all of that, these guys are just been laying on the ground until basically this week. They still looking good. Now, this is the new one that I'm growing that I've never grown before. This is called the Southern Ripe Tomato. And y'all, if this thing has good flavor, this is gonna be one of my new favorites because look, at the tomatoes this thing is producing. And again, this one just got trellised yesterday or day before yesterday. You can still, I still got dirt on some of the leaves there and it's healthy. Very, 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 very healthy. But look at those tomatoes, y'all. Isn't that unreal? That is crazy. I mean, they are loaded down. Loaded down with tomatoes. So are these sun goes. Man, I can't help myself. Now, here are the heirlooms I'm growing right here. And you can see the difference. This is why we struggle with heirlooms in our area. Our climate here in central and south Alabama. I don't know above central Alabama. I don't know how these heirlooms grow in your area. But here... From my experience of several, several, several years of gardening, they don't do well. And I kind of grow them because I'm only going to get a few tomatoes off of them. Uh, disease is just going to catch up with them. And it's just a novelty thing for me, honestly. It really, really is. I love the history behind them. Uh, I got several, several books about heirloom tomatoes. I love reading about them. The, just, I really do love old heirloom tomatoes. But... They're just so hard for us to grow here. They just really are. They just can't handle our climate. And then once they start to decline, 
the pests come in. The pests are gonna go for those weakest plants and that's what they go after. So I struggle with heirlooms, I do. And that's why y'all don't see me grow that many. I'm growing three heirloom plants this year out of my 400 rows of, or 400 foot of tomatoes, three heirlooms and you can look. I've done the same thing to this heirloom tomato as I've done to all of these tomatoes here. So yeah, I, I, I just I just don't grow them well. But I did want to show you our heirlooms. Too much time and effort, honestly, for the time I have, plus the results I get. So, all right, y'all, we got a nice little harvest of Bellarosas, almost a three gallon pot here. Now the Halsinator is gonna be like a beef steak style tomato. These are gonna be big tomatoes for the most part. You can see they're big tomatoes. I like to pick mine like that. Like that right there. Like this one. They just haven't turned all the way yet. And that's just to keep the birds off of them, to be honest with you, more than anything. The longer they stay on the vine, of course, the better they're gonna taste. Last up is the red snapper. Now, I will say this about the Southern Ripe. It must be a late bloomer because all my other tomatoes are turning and we're harvesting. That Southern Ripe is still green, so we'll just have to watch it and see how long it takes to actually turn. That may be its downside if you're an impatient person. This one, Red Snapper, is not quite ready to pick yet, but look how big it is. That may be the biggest tomato we've had this year. That is a monster. I'm gonna have to weigh that one. Probably pick it in a couple of days. Now I got them in three separate baskets. That way I can keep them separated and we're gonna do a blind taste test on our tomatoes this year. The boys are coming. The boys are back in town. They're coming over the hill in just a second. You reckon we can get the electrical done before they come over here? I hope so. <laughs> do you think we can? Do you think we can do the electrical on this barn? I hope so. <laughs> here they come. The helpers have arrived. Bring your voltmeter and bring your wire cutters and some wire nuts and yes, come on. Yes, sir. We're on the way. Oh my gracious, this is gonna be fun. All right, so then we can knock it out. We need to pull, we need nail boxes first. Okay. Pull some wire. Gotcha. Put the plugs and switches in. We can handle that. That's a full day. Let's get started. Let's get started. Y'all ready, boys? Come on, boys, let's go. And girl. Yeah. Don't forget about Hollywood. But Holly's been here. <laughs> she just didn't get here. Lately, everything's trembling All my shelters are opening Alright, so I wanted to take a moment real quick and show you guys this beautiful light fixture we've been hanging on to before we started or after we, was it after we built the house we got it? After it was we after. Built the house we got it. We couldn't find a place for it. But this light is just absolutely beautiful and and just want to show it to you. Let's just go look at it. Enough of me talking. Holly, let's show them about this awesome light that we have decided to use in here. So, this light doesn't look like much. You reckon I want to hold it up? Uh. You scared? I'm kind of scared. Because of the glass globes. We got it here in one piece, so. It's it's beautiful. Very beautiful. Well, I don't even want to lift it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't want to take no chances. So, Mary Carl's friend, Caroline, who has been friends with her since they were two years old. Right. Her grandmother bought this light to use in a previous home, and she couldn't use it. So, she, in turn, gave it to us to potentially use in our house. Mm hmm But when we received it, we already had all the light fixtures installed, and there was nowhere to use it. We always know that we save things for future use. Right. And I'm so glad we did because it's going to work out perfect. 
Yes, we decided to put it here over the barn, our barn, over this counter here and center it up. Um, the other day when I brought it in here, I actually did hold it up and you could see it up there and gave it the A-OK -okay that it looked good. So Jason thinks he can actually yeah. stand up on the counter. We know this is gonna be the height right here. It's not this. Right, not this. so that's our concern as far as how far it hangs yeah. down. All right. We can measure it, but... Well, the visual is going to be... We're visual people. Yeah. That's just how we are. We are just the type of folks we are, so we... But this we is kind of... This is kind of risky, Jason. Made it this far. Well, don't talk. It's just when you pick it up, they start clanking together. Like wind chimes. Like wind chimes. But not like wind chimes. <laughs> All right, you're home free. And it is heavy. What do you think? I think That's that it'll be fine. Too. I mean, we can it. adjust it. Yeah. We can adjust it, because it does hang down kind of low, but okay. I think we can adjust it. Okay, good. We'll just mark the ones we want. That's well, right. We can, well, we can't hang it. You can. We can hang it in and adjust it by itself. That's right. So the sit screws on the outside. Okay, well, we can do that then. Yay! So, um, it's no longer being stored in our closet. Yep. It's going to be used in my milk room, and I will just love looking at this beautiful Yeah, it is, it is beautiful, especially once the ceiling gets done and the walls get done. It's going to fit in perfect. And it's thanks, got... thanks to Miss Sandy for, yes. for rehoming this light with us because she's going to get to see it on videos. And we're going to get to think of her when we do see it. That's right. And it is beautiful. It's got this old antique looking globes and the Edison bulbs. So it's going to fit in perfect with this rustic antique looking thing we got going on here That's in right. the milking parlor. I'm so excited. And I just realized something. What? I had covered this plug up with that light and didn't get that oh, one done. I didn't get that one wired. Yeah. That's okay. You realize it now. Yep. It's not too late. That's right. Okay. So... On to finishing. On to finishing. Feels like everything's crumbling. All the windows are shattering. Hold your heart says it's too cold to read. Face expressions that mean nothing. Dip your sadness in this bowl till you feel mine. Changes in your body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, <laughs> we got it. We pretty much got it all done. We did. What a day. Whew. We tired. Matter of fact, Brooke left a little bit earlier to go ahead and get supper started while I finished everything up, but we got it done. We got it done. Uh, all the plugs, the switches, all the wiring, except for one thing. Uh, we got all the lights wired in here. We're gonna put lights on the outside. Yeah, I think we showed y'all that in an earlier video above each one of these doors. I got those guys wired. The only thing I don't have wired is are the lights that are going up here. They're gonna light up the barn. And uh, we got four on each side, LED industrial lights and That'll be next. Once I get that done, y'all, the electrical will be done besides what my dad's guys are gonna do. And earlier today, the power company swung by here to let us know that we can put the panel box on either side of the barn. Uh, we thought we were gonna have to put it on the front, which we really didn't wanna do, but you know, it is what it is. But he said we could put it on the back too, it didn't matter. So we're gonna put it on the back, and that's what I left from my dad's guys to do. I didn't run any home runs. If you don't know what that is, that's where the wire goes from the panel box to whatever room or area you're doing. They call it a home run. And I didn't run any of those because I didn't know where the panel box was gonna go. So I just may leave that up to my dad and him because I'm gonna let them put the panel box in and the weather head that goes up top that the power company is gonna connect into. But we are getting there. Man, this is this is awesome. It's really close here. And y'all, we made sure we have plenty of plugs in here. We got a plug here. We put a plug up there, and you may be wondering why. 
It's because we got this stoplight that we've had for years and years that we got at a flea market, and we're thinking about hanging that stoplight up here in this corner. So we need to power to eat. Plug there, plug there. We got plugs in the stalls, and we got them up high enough that the animals can't get to them in case we have maybe a baby that needs a heat light or anything. We got plugs there. Another plug there. Show y'all one more plug. I think it's on this side. Yeah, right here is the easiest one to see. Right there, we put one up there above this one because we want to hang those lights like we got in the parterre garden on our stalls up here. And we did the same thing over there. We can hang the lights up there. Plugs in the stalls again on this side as well. Even got the two outside lights, the front and the rear above the door. Got those up and wired. And I know that um, Peaches will be happy that uh, we're coming along on the barn. And uh, she told me I needed a clock out before I started talking to you guys because she didn't pay me for talking to y'all. So I did do that too. So she'll be happy about that as well. Hey, Peaches. I just come to tell you that we did get the electrical all but the inside hanging lights everything's done except those and then i gotta hang the, the uh the five outside lights on the sides it was a day now i'm not gonna lie it was a day fifi i'm trying i was trying to record is it is that necessary I'm sorry about that, y'all. That's gonna save my dad's crew a lot of time, and they can come in and do what they got. Tip, what the, you, you photo bombing? Yeah, I was trying to talk to Peaches. I'm trying to get some browning points, and you're kind of messing up my vibe. You know what? I think I had to cut our meeting short, and I do want to tell you that I did clock out when I was talking to the camera earlier, so all that's done, and so we're good. If you think about it, let me know and I'll let you in over, let you in over there and you can go uh, inspect it. But uh, I doubt you'll do that. But uh, we can send Nugget over there if we have to. All right, girl, go on, go on take your little nap. You probably need it. <laughs> you gotta stay. Tip, tip. Really? No way. That's what I figured, yeah. He said Peaches ain't done nothing today. Yeah, I'll keep that between us, so. I don't want her to hear us and know about that, but okay. What's happening, Big Jesse? How you doing, Big Jesse? Hmm? How you doing, girl? You looking good. Yes, you are. I can't even get a good shot of you. You have to get all up on me. I just wanted to show everybody how good you looking. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gracious all right i want to show everybody a little capri sun out here too hey buddy what's going on capri sun what's going on junior oh i got a stretch yeah me too brother i need to stretch myself i ain't gonna lie y'all the countdown still on loretta and gus will be together soon I need to get me a little, I've been saying that, I need to get us a little countdown. I need to look on the calendar and see what the day is that we'll let Loretta and Gus together. Together at last. Yep. I think you got about a week and a half, y'all, I think. Or maybe two weeks. I need to look at the calendar, though. Y'all know how I am with dates. Not very good. I can't remember nothing. Yeah. But I'll go look. Hey, guys, I have you know that me and Brooke... Pretty much knocked out the electrical today. So, yeah. Not only is the day of Loretta and Gus getting together um, coming soon, but you guys headed to the barn is uh, getting closer every day. Almost, almost as close as Jesse likes to get to you. Mm -hmm. We're not that close yet, though, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness, I'm falling down, Jesse. Thank you.